It's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. We've gone through, or I have, or we have, the production and the trade in progress phase while my son sang himself to sleep, and I thought I'd just pop in and let you know what's been going on. So, uh, production, it's all happening in the Northeast here. The Japanese, they did some production, didn't do a lot of um, unit purchasing. They pretty much flush, which is going for money, trying to kind of build back his funds so that he can eventually retake the points from that. Um, and I, I, I don't know, he's having a hard time fully committing against the Mongols. It's not there's not a lot of hope for him in beating them, I guess, is, is the way he feels. Partially because in order to retake the mainland, he has to come in from sea, and his boats can only hold so many units, so that would be difficult. And the Mongolian units are superior, because they're way up here. Um, so he just put a few units down here in order to expand through the other islands of Japan, and then he, he reinforced Sichuan, China here, which is a nice point scoring space for him. The Mongolians, however, they built up everywhere. And that could actually um, put Giraffe in contention for having the most spaces in the world if they get a successful maneuver. Because there's no one there. We've seen this time and time again in this game. If no one's around and you have all this space, you can just spread out and rake in the points. Fortunately, the Mongolians don't score that much. You know, that's supposed to be offset by the bonus they get in defeating um, higher aged empires, but, you know, I'm drafts working with what she has here. Uh, we had another trade between the Zimbabweans and the Pharaonic Egyptians. Um, the, the Pharaonic Egyptians won out again. Uh, Zimbabweans, though, you know, they're, they're still, they, they passed the Renaissance. There's the Renaissance there. And I don't think I talked about when that came up, but it's one of those things like paved roads. Once you get it, anyone who passes that gets that new ability. That adds to their trade ability, so that was nice for them. Um, but still, you know, the upshot is the Frank Egyptians are cruising, which may make Runt hold on to them longer. So it might not be that bad for Giraffe, because if, if these Frank Egyptians just kind of hang on, I don't know. If, I, I guess the idea is that if they're spread out, they're they're not very strong, right? But they seem to be doing okay. We're starting off the maneuver phase, and I just wanted to show you this roll so that you would believe me when I tell you. Well, you didn't see me roll it, but um, I didn't arrange this. This is how it ended up. We're seeing here ten dice to five. Uh, just to give you some context. This is uh, Flesh's Portuguese just did a, a a raid, not a raid, maybe an advance, or I don't know the, the military or the naval term for this, but um, a skewer, let's call it a skewer, into English waters. They sent in, it's not really a skewer, what would that be? Like if, I guess, uh, yeah, maybe a spear, a th a, ooh, a harpoon. A harpoon into English waters sent three boats right here to try and take on this boat and one boat over there to take on this little boat. Uh, unfortunately for Flush, he had eight, ten. Oh, yep, ten. Cause he had, and he had seven. Oh, I didn't even roll enough dice for for guy. Good thing I talked. Sometimes I you know, I forget things. All right. So that didn't even change anything. So let's, let me make sure I have my math right here. 8, 10 to 7. And he still lost. He lost by a lot. Because if you can see here, he has no attack dice. Poor Flush. He put a lot of resources into that. That's $12 worth of boats, which is a good, some serious scratch. So here, Cowboy's going to get both of these, and, that, and he gets nothing. So with two of those... Um, I don't remember what I figured out for getting rid of units, but he's going to be able to get rid of something. And then these, um, let's say he can get rid of one, so that I don't have to think with those two. And then the other two will retreat. Then we have another fight here. Um, Cowboy was going to, or Flush was going to do this particular thing. Not Alpine training. He was going to do treachery. So that means that this guy has to retreat. So he just gets that one. And he'll retreat there to kind of, but that kind of puts him in a bad position because he's got one boat up here and two down here. 
not so good. Other flush news for his maneuvering, he maneuvered all around <laughs> North America there. Um, the Free State, if they're not being discarded, they're going to be in trouble. He opted to just kind of surround them and cut them off rather than put them out of their misery. All right, the Ukrainians have primed their skewer into Germany here. Um, not good odds here for Runt, but we're gonna go ahead and roll it up. It's 20 to 12. No, 20 to 11 is what we're looking at. So I'll go ahead and pick these up and then I'll let you watch me roll. I haven't done that in a while. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna go left-handed. So um, the yellow and white are cowboys and the red and black are uh, Runt's Germans here. And it's a fight over wheat primarily. Well, it's a fight over home territory and wheat. So if we see here, let's see, let's do runs first. She looks like she has a lot of defensive dice, which just means she loses less for every attack die that um, her opponent, Cowboys Ukrainians, uses. Not a lot of it, but she's not going to gain a lot from this, um, which I guess makes sense that she wouldn't. I didn't do a very good job with my t-shirt here. It's very bunchy. But, yeah, a lot of attack dice here for the Ukrainians. This is a 3-2-1 die, so that counts as an attack die. I should actually, I don't even know if this is, yeah, it's, it's, it's even. I didn't know if the numbers were even on that. A lot of neutral dice here. But definitely enough to defend off both of her attacks, so she's going to only score two out of it. And he's got three, seven, three, seven. So she had just enough defense dice to defend all that off. So he's going to be pulling in seven. She gets two. Let's see what that does to the board. All right, so what I did was I, I multiplied the um, number of dice by three, I think. And had that determine what age you could remove. So, see, she, if Cowboy wanted to remove a knight, he needed to use six dice to get 18. And he had a remainder of one. Um, there's no nothing really he can do about that with that extra die. Um, I forget, and maybe if someone's like just watched this one, or just watched the one before this one, or whenever it was, I figured out what I would do with the age cards. I think it was like four times as many dice, was it? Or three times as many dice to, to, to manipulate someone's culture card? I don't remember and I don't, I, if anyone remembers, let me know. I, I think it's three or four times. Anyway, it's, it's not gonna be enough to change any hands. So upshot is he, he removed a, a knight and the other knight uh, retreated. I, I like how this works a bit better. It's not like, I mean, there's still casualties in the battle. Uh, but it's not it's not so all or nothing um, as what I was doing before. I don't think it's perfect, but we we haven't time in this life to be perfectionists, do we? The end of the maneuver phase saw a little change in the colonial labyrinth. Basically, not a lot though. Uh, flush gained on Runt at first. He had to use three guys to do it. Only one was successful. But then Runt's Geronimo over here was successful. Now he's flipping back this way I guess. Um, while I'm looking over here I have to say the Papal States have not been super effective especially ever since uh, this Jihad came. They've just been maneuvering. She actually uh, opted not to maneuver with the Phronic Egyptians and took the, the point penalty this turn um, for not uh, enacting the Jihad. Um, but they, they just don't have enough forces to really hurt either the Portuguese or the Ukrainians there. So. Run's going to have to do some some serious soul searching with her uh, Muslim papists. Although it turns out Draft's Free State decided to choose Destiny instead of Discard Empire, she was actually counting on uh, Flush extinguishing them for her. Uh, she played a rare conjunction in order to get rid of them. Rare conjunction lets you do something else, another action. It's a really great card, actually. Uh, some other action after you. Uh, do an action, so she chose after the destiny, or to determine the destiny to be um, a brief life. Big civilized move by cowboy. Cowboy's English. 
they caused an earthquake right here. Hurt his his own Ukrainians, but um, I forgot to move them back. Hurt them a little bit, but it also hurt quite a bit the Germans. Not only destroyed their, well, moved, wrecked their capital city. It's not destroyed, um, but it moved them back, and it also hurt the Papal States. So that's going to help him, his Ukrainians, push in to um, Europe. Furthermore, he caused a currency crisis for the Japanese, which pretty much negated a lot of what Flush accomplished with the Japanese this turn. So, a pretty powerful move by Cowboy. He needs to keep getting those those um, civilized cards and use them to great effect, because that's his big advantage over most of the other people. I haven't calculated the Pharaonic Egyptians, but they had more reeds, at least, than the English. I'm not sure if they do have, if they have more than the Phoenicians or not. He also got a bunch of money for his English. He found a gold mine, which was great. Um, so that put him number one. Taps on that score. So, more points for Cowboy. Great. And we finished our round of scoring bit different this time. Uh, Runt only scored 11, so she's going down. Relative to Cowboy, who's scoring 13, so he's going a bit up. Uh, Flush and Giraffe are about the same. Giraffe got 4. Flush got, I think, 12 this turn. Um, so very good round for Cowboy overall. If he can keep pressing on the Germans and taking those wheat areas, he might be able to improve his score further and possibly overtake. Well, it looks like he, it would be Giraffe he's going to overtake because uh, Flush is about overtaking Giraffe. So it might actually come down to Cowboy and Giraffe instead of Cowboy and Flush. And that's something, I mean, big happens, which could could definitely happen because we have all these these powerful god powers in effect. I did do the counting. The Pharaonic Egyptians currently have the um, most amount of wreaths. So they, so Runt can do anything to anyone as long as she has a card for it. Her, um, let's just take a quick scan as to how everyone's empires are doing. Pharaonic Egyptians are about the same. They're, they actually had a, they had a great turn themselves. They had this uh, effect that allowed them to improve all their cities. They had a lot of cities, so now they have an even greater um, income generating potential. They, I think they they, ge they definitely generate the most income al already, and now that she's just increased that quite a bit by playing that card. Her German's Papal State, terrible. Not doing well at all. Um, not only is the German capital disordered, has the Ukrainians coming at them, um, she, Runt really hasn't been able to use these two empires to beat back the Ukrainians. She is she's going to be in trouble with that. Probably probably be wise to try something different. And I, you know I think Runt is fairly wise. I think she will. Uh, let's look at Flush. Flush has his Japanese. They're tough for him. Um, it's hard to foresee them scoring any more. Uh, but they still score five points, which is useful to him. So although he's kind of he kind of feels stuck with them. Um, they're still big scorers. Portuguese scoring about as much. Had some disappointments with the English this turn, but not not something he can't come back from. So basically, Flush needs to not rock his boat too much, because uh, as long as he can, can you know stay consistent, he should be able to um, make it to the next cutoff. But we'll see. A lot can change by then. When did I even say that cutoff was? It's right here, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's got to be right there. Okay, and then let's see. Giraffe, giraffes, Mongols are looking good. Um, but again, not a very high score. Zimbabweans, you know, one of those, like, kind of trick empires that, that doesn't seem as good as it maybe can uh, be. But a lot of empires in the Fifth Age were about to turn the corner again. Um, interesting to see these. They're, they're jumping up a lot faster than they were before, uh, which is fun. A lot of boiling, a lot of roiling. We're going to be seeing some new empires, probably some discarded empires next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitary Mega Tournament 7x7 Ages.